Growing up, I watched community members disappear. I've attended more funerals than I have graduations or weddings. Fear is a driving force of some of the activism that I do. Running for missing and murdered Indigenous women, it is a means of survival. We have escaped Rosalie Fish Sitsta Buckleshoes Abshed. Hello, my name's Rosalie Fish, um, and I'm from the Muckleshoot lands, and I'm enrolled in the Cowlitz tribe. This is the 2017 senior class gift, but everybody who graduates leave a hand, leaves a handprint on this tree. Oh, that's me. <gasps> this is me. Wow, right in the middle. Yeah. This girl, Kaylee, went to tribal school. Uh, she was my cousin, and she's missing now. The missing and murdered indigenous woman crisis is a generational form of victimization towards indigenous women, where we are targeted as victims of human trafficking and sex trafficking, as well as victims of violence. Um, so much so that murder is the third leading cause of death in Native women, and we face mur murder rates more than 10 times the national average in some counties. I dedicated each of my races at my Washington State High School track meet to a missing or murdered Indigenous woman in my community. My first race was for my aunt, Alice Looney, who went missing in 2004 from Wapato and was found deceased 15 months later. The 3200 for Renee Davis was my sportsmanship medal that I got. It felt like a medal for Masi, Renee's unborn son who um, was shot and killed with her. Uh, Masi Molina would have been my cousin had he been born. We're gathering on the ancestral and current lands of the Muckleshoot tribe. In January of 2021, I signed my national letter of intent to go run for the University of Washington in track and field. Having the opportunity to represent the 29 tribes in Washington that have impacted who I am growing up, it's something that I could never turn down. My identity as a runner is something that's super important to me and connected to who I am as an indigenous person and as a sister. Before I ran, I never really felt like anybody had to acknowledge who I was or the struggles that my community faced, or to even acknowledge that we exist. <laughs> Running gave me a platform to represent my identity as an indigenous person. To represent Muckleshoot community in a way that was strong and resilient and fierce, it completely changed the way that I viewed my community as a whole and, and what we could do. It gives me a sense of strength. It makes me feel like I could stand up to anyone or anything. There are a lot of factors that have contributed to the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls epidemic. And these are factors that date back to colonization. Because of the sovereign nature of Native nations, they are able to form governments and legal systems within their communities. Right now we're seeing our Native nations are not able to prosecute non-Native men. And that comes into a very big roadblock when you're trying to protect the safety of your women in your community. This is very prevalent here in Washington and in King County. Racism and discrimination lead individuals in places of power to disbelieve Native women. We 
walk between worlds of both sexism and racism. Our intersectional experiences make Indigenous women a target. By the age of 14, I was knowingly aware of my own vulnerability and felt extremely powerless. When I run, especially in a place that I feel connected to, I feel peace. When I'm running, I can smell the cedar trees. I can taste the huckleberries. I can feel the dew on my skin. It can connect me to my ancestral roots. The Knuckle Shoot Reservation is really a safe place. It's a space for me to practice the things that I love doing without facing any type of criticism or judgment or racism towards it. So being home on the reservation, it's more than having my family members around. It's having people who understand me and accept me. The land that my people come from has cedar trees that we used for hats and for clothing and jewelry, and it has the ocean that we used for salmon and traveling through our canoes. And so the ocean and cedar trees are extremely important to my people. Yeah, keep, keep kind of walking that, that way a little bit. Why you pull? Okay. <laughs> okay. Careful. All right. They won't, they won't have to put it in. Longer. Oh. Timber. There was no way, as a Native woman, I could not know about the missing and murdered Indigenous women crisis because it impacted my life so much. It can be extremely heavy. Yeah. Yep, keep going. I do have to acknowledge the times when things have gotten so heavy that I can't stand anymore. No matter how scared I get, my love for my family and my community always overcomes my fear. That worked out pretty good. Yeah. I know. In the future, I envision that a young Native girl can live with the earth and her siblings and her cousins and not have the fear of being missing or murdered. Rosalie embodies that hope for the next generation. And that's something that we also think about in the work that we do as Native people. The power of being seen has such an impact on me as an indigenous person because I know how it feels to not be seen or to feel like I don't exist. Native American people have always persevered for the people who will come after us. I'm able to remember the progress that has been put into me being here right now. At this point, there's no way that I could ever separate my running and my identity as an Indigenous person. And to me, that's a type of pride that really lifts me up from the heart. I think with the path that we're on, the future that I see, there won't be a missing and murdered Indigenous woman crisis anymore. <laughs>